nothing on earth that can compare with grace. Grace of Elohim, his unmerited favor that flows towards us, by which we are saved, by which he processes us, by which he preserves us from evil, by which he imparts in us his nature, and by which he preserves us till the day of ultimate redemption when the sound of the trumpet will call for those who are sealed with Holy Spirit. Grace is everything. And actually one of the major problems of religion is inability to understand the fullness of what grace is and the tendency to relax to works. And one of the things that also has happened is that when people do not have the balance of scriptures, they can take grace to mean something else entirely, to mean irresponsibility. Man has no more responsibility. You can just do whatever you like and the Lord picks up all the bills and you have no role to play whatsoever, even in issues of righteousness and holiness. Is that what the Bible teaches? The answer is no. Play no. Don't even call it hyper grace. You are glorifying an evil. It is false grace that teaches man's irresponsibility. The Lord put the will of man in there so that drawing down his grace, the will of man can say yes to the Lord and go the way of the Lord, obey the Lord in all things, not by struggle, but by his grace. And that is why the cause of grace and this very book on grace, which is available for your free download on the website www.kingdombusclub.com, presents grace from a holistic perspective to enable us to understand. We, we take away all those isms, the dogmatic isms of various denominations. They go this way, they go that way, they cherry pick what they want. And what the Lord has done is to take them out of us. All those things that theologians do when they begin to imagine what grace is and they put in their salt and pepper and sabos a dangerous cocktail of ideas, the Lord has put it aside. Say, go to the Bible. The Bible interprets itself. What does it say about grace? And so that what we do is just basically a running commentary based on the word also. And I want to encourage you, brothers and sisters, to study that book, and not only to study it, to understand it by His grace, and not only to understand it by His grace, take it and teach other people. If every one of us will do our part in extending grace, there will be an awesome company of people of grace across the world. And on that note, we want to pray that we begin the first of three lessons that will close it out. This one now, then this evening from London, about 7 o'clock, which is 2 p.m. Eastern Time and 1 p.m. Central Time and 8 o'clock South African Time. And I think about maybe about, you know, 12 midnight for the Middle East, we're going to teach the next one and tomorrow morning will conclude now what it means is this brothers and sisters there are there are about um four lessons or so that are not in the book that are on video we don't have text yet for them and please if there are those who volunteer to translate to transcribe these things we receive it from you especially those ones that have no notes so that we can have a complete suit for our learning. And I pray the Lord, Father in heaven, help us today to receive the beginning of the epilogue series. Have your way and glorify Yeshua HaMashiach, through whom you impart grace to us by your Spirit. Grant us understanding that we may walk in grace to the extent of capacity you have placed in us. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. And so today, brothers and sisters, we begin the epilogue graze down the wire and we'll see how we get to tomorrow morning. As we come to the closure of this epic course, we can see that Yahweh has been truly gracious to us. He has given us a, com a fairly comprehensive insight into what grace means and applications of grace. He has taken us far beyond the narrow constructionist view of religion which essentially limits the subject matter. Some limit it to salvation alone. And they do all kinds of theologies on that. And sometimes they go outside the world. Brothers and sisters, Yahweh is not through with us yet. He is still speaking and willing to reveal far more than any of us can possibly grasp. Why is it so? 
we are speaking of the Elohim of all grace. That's what Peter calls him in 1 Peter 5 verse 10. The Elohim of all grace. And where does he reside in? He sits on the throne of grace. That's the name of his throne. His throne is a throne of grace. It's a throne of righteousness, people know that. It's a throne of mercy, people know that. But essentially, it's a throne of grace. And he who is Elohim of all grace, sitting on the throne of grace, what does he do? Grace is part of his nature. Elohim is love, we know that. Elohim is holy, we know that. But also, we need to know that Elohim is love, is grace. If you know him as love, know him as holy, and know him as grace, you are coming close to something important. If we can but grasp this fundamental reality, our entire worldview may experience a radical transformation. In effect, brothers and sisters, when we receive Yeshua into our hearts by faith, do we know what we have done? We receive all that he represents. We receive his person. We receive his nature. We receive his kingdom. Religion shrinks at these thoughts. While it's opposite, the pseudo-kingdom gospel squirms because there'll be no room to manipulate a saint who catches this revelation which screams out of the pages of scripture. Man and brethren, remember when John, the apostle of love, was writing about Yeshua? He said, that, look, grace and, you know, the law came by Moses, the grace and truth came by Yeshua, meaning that the epitome of it is in him, for in him is the fullness of grace. And that's why John was able to write in First John, I mean John chapter 1, verse 11 to 12, he came unto his own, Yeshua came from heaven to his own, the Jews of Israel, his own received him not. So what did he do? But as many as received him, whether Jews or Gentiles, what happened? He gave them power to become the sons of Elohim, even to them who have believed on his name. We need to grasp this. That if you are genuinely saved, I'm not talking about believe it or not, I'm born again, your life is speaking or nothing. If you are genuinely saved, no matter how young, no matter how old, no matter whether male or female, it doesn't matter your socioeconomic situation, grace is right within you at the point of salvation. Why? Grace is part of your DNA. Your spiritual DNA includes His grace. That is the power and nature to be a son of Yahweh to as many as receive him. To them he gave power to become the sons of Elohim. What is that power? The power of his grace that was given to you. So what the master will have us do is this. If you are saved, and this is so important, he wants us to proceed to burn the bridge with our former life. Represented by ambitions, the things we want to do want to achieve our priorities, our preferences, and inclinations. Those who don't burn this bridge, they begin to have a problem of mixture of the old them and the new them. We are told in 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if any man is in Yeshua, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. What are the old things that passed away? The old Adamic life. The old life based on self-struggle, self-ability, is passed away. The new life is a received one in Yeshua. He paid all the price at the cross. Our job is to receive by faith. We take the responsibility of believing the report of scripture and appropriating it and it becomes our own. The call of grace is a call to go beyond that entry point of salvation. If you're an evangelical, because most times evangelicals stay on salvation and they park there, they begin to run around circles there. For Pentecostals, it goes beyond looking for the power of Holy Spirit because that's what most Pentecostals do. Power, power to do miracles, signs, wonders. These people, power, power to live the righteous life. The Lord said, we got to go beyond these things. These are basics. If you read Hebrews chapter 6, he said we must go beyond the doctrines he calls fundamental doctrines, laying of hands, all those things. We must go beyond them. We must go to the place where we begin to apprehend the deeper realms of the Spirit. And what are those deeper realms? If you are saved, 
It's an invitation to take all of Yahweh that is on offer to humanity. All. Take all. Believe in all. Embrace all. And what is that? An exchange of our sin nature for his holy nature. And our inclination for works. Struggle. Whether it is make money of our own strength, of our own ability, for which we go to school, for which we labor, we take that job, we take that job, take that job. we want to make it because we want to buy that, we want to have that asset. That struggle of trying to make it, the Lord is saying, if you are saved, he's inviting us. Come out of that struggle because that was what was pronounced on Adam the day he fell. Adam was in grace one day. Eve allowed Satan to talk her out of grace, to activate her soul, and she disobeyed Elohim and obeyed Satan. He became the master. She gave to her husband. He also succumbed his will to his wife and to Satan, and they lost grace. And Elohim pronounced upon them the cause of works. In Genesis chapter 3, from verse 16 to 20 to 19, he said, you know, Adam, I gave you all things, eat. Whatever you want, only say, just leave that one. Since you obeyed the adversary to, to, uh, to disobey me, now from today, Adam, go and walk, go and struggle, go and sweat, go and eat. Even the earth that was bringing out good things for you shall now bring forth tongues and tissues. That's when he began to sweat to eat. And brothers and sisters, a lot of believers behave as if that is where the world has been. Where the kingdom has been at Adam's sin. They forget Galatians 3 2, 8, 13 to 14. Yeshua has redeemed us from the cause of the law. And of course, the cause of Adam, I mean, the cause of the earth dream, being made a cause for us that the blessings of Abraham may come upon the Gentiles through faith. We may receive the promise of the Spirit. In other words, there is a promise to come out of works, struggle, to come to the place of believing in the Father. To come for a place where we are no longer living by our strength of our arm, believe, believe from, receive from Adam, to a place where we enter into the rest of grace. Grace is entering into his rest. Hebrews 3, Hebrews chapter 4, from verse 1. Let us therefore fear, lest the promise be left us of entering into his rest. Any of you should seem to come or short of it. For unto us was the gospel preached, as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that had it. Even today, I want to ask you, how many of you are mixing the word you have had with faith? How many of you are making up your mind? I'm not going to live by works again. I'm going to live by grace. How many of you are making up your mind that all the Father has given in this course, even if I have to watch the video three times to get it in, even if I have to read the book two, three times to get it in, how many of you will pay that price of receiving the grace of Elohim, he says this thing to this, for the word preached unto us, unto them, the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that had it. For we which have believed do enter into his rest, as he has said, I sworn in my rod, if they shall enter into my rest, though the works were finished on the foundation of the wall. Then in verse 9, he said something important, Hebrews 4, they therefore remained a rest to the people of Elohim, for he that is entered into his rest, he also has ceased from his own works as Elohim did from his. Let us therefore labor to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. The rest is the rest of grace, the rest of living by grace, the rest of trusting him that he has worked out your future. One of the biggest problems that we have is that even it starts with parents. They want to pressure their children. I want a doctor in this family. I want a lawyer. I want a this. And they pressure the children. If Elohim has created the children to be something else, that pressure that is put on the children means that they will have to switch from what the Lord provided, which they will have entered by grace. They now switch on to struggle to be a doctor, a lawyer, or whatever. And maybe grace was not offered, and automatically they now live by works. How many believers, including ministers, are ready today if the Lord wants all their children to be full-time ministers? You'll find that very few. All over the world, you probably find only 1%. You know what? Everybody wants people to go and earn money, make big money, and people are not trusting the Lord enough. One well, and brethren, 
no one who insists on living the normal life can enter into the rest of Elohim. The invitation of grace hinges on going beyond the free gift of salvation to burn the bridge of doubt and self-help. Two things. Burn the bridge of doubting Elohim and his mercy, his love, and his grace. Burn the bridge of self-help where you think is by your own strength or by your ability and cast ourselves entirely into the hands of the living Elohim in a childlike trust in his divine providence which takes care of every situation. Come to the place you believe the Lord. He knows you. He got my back. He got your back. He knows everything about us. And he has already, when he chose us in Yeshua before the foundation of this world, that same day, the same Elohim has chosen or determined the full measure of allocation for the assignment including finances, including connection, including material assets, immaterial assets, social assets, social capital, goodwill, the full measure of what it will take to fulfill the destiny he chose in you before the foundation of the world in Yeshua, he has already measured it out. And what the enemy does is to make believers not to catch this, not to press into this, but to constantly relapse into self-help. That's why Yeshua said, except we repent and be like children, we won't enter into the kingdom. So he wants us to trust him completely. And we cannot trust him until we consecrate to him completely, which is what he said in Romans 12, verse 1, 2, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercy of Elohim, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is a reasonable service. He wants us to, to come to the place where we take his yoke. And in Matthew chapter 11, 28 to 30, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Come, I'll give you rest. Exchange your labors for my rest. Take my yoke upon you. Allow my yoke to be upon you so that you can be like a fool. I turn you right, you turn right. Turn you left, you turn left. Go forward, you go forward. Go backward, you go backward. You don't make decisions on your own. You are totally dependent upon him and his yoke. He said, and learn of me. For I'm meek and lowly in heart, you shall find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my body is light. Brothers and sisters, that's why the Lord says to us, if we continue to depend on our own strength, we'll miss it, we'll fail. That's why in the book of Matthew 6, from 25, Yeshua offers us an incredible deal. The kingdom deal is the deal of grace. He said, would you believe me enough to the same point? He says in Matthew 6, 25, for, therefore I say unto you, if you are my own, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat. Or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body, what you shall put on. Is not the life more than food, and the body than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are you not much better than they, which of you by taking thought can add one cubit to your stature? And why take you thought for raiment? Consider the ladies of the field, how they grow, and toil not, neither do they spin, yet I saw unto you. That even Solomon, in all his glory, that great man, people had about his glory from as far as Africa and came to see the glory. Yet Solomon, in all his glory, was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if Elohim so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore, w therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? What shall we drink? What with us shall we be clothed? Then verse 32 told us something interesting. For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. You know what it means? Today, go and check the prayer life of Christians. I mean, the vast majority is give me, 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 give me. Gentile prayer. Gentile prayer is prayer focused on what our belly needs. The Lord is saying we need to come to the place where instead of being too worried and anxious about what we need to eat and drink, we must believe that the Elohim who brought us into this world, He is the great provider. He is Jehovah Jireh. He is, he is the one that can care for us. Believe it, trust it, no matter what happens. Even if your kitchen was running out 
I don't know about you, but I know that there are many families, including us, that this lockdown for us is since 23rd March till today. Three months and counting, and yet, yet supernaturally Elohim has provided. And for many families, that's the same record. Is the Lord not teaching us something? Is the Lord not teaching us that we need to begin to trust him in an awesome way? That's why he said in verse, he said, For your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of all these things. That doesn't mean go and fold your hand. That doesn't mean do not do some work or business. No, it simply means whatever you do, let it be a function of his divine direction. You don't just grab any job because a job has appeared. Because it's a job he leads you to. Especially when you have choices. You don't just enter any business because it's available. Inquire of him. If he says, yes, go in. And if you're going to go in, go with your two feet into the waters. If he leads you, go in. Begin to trust him that the strength to do the business is from him. The grace to excel in it is from him. And therefore, you give him all the glory, not your strength of arm. Even the money that comes out of it, the profit and the income, is not your income, is not your profit, is his own. He gave you the strength, he gave you the facility, he gave you the channel, you return the glory to him, and then you ask him for direction in how to spend it. Brothers and sisters, the way of grace is a totally different life. And many believers do not know it because they are so used to the way of works. The way of works, the way of ability, the way of strength. And once you really stay in works, you cannot walk in grace. They are opposite. According to Romans chapter 11, 6, I mean 5, 6, and 7. If you stay in works, you deny grace. And if you get grace, you put works into the trash bin. Brothers and sisters, he said, But seek ye first the kingdom of Elohim. And his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. He wants to add them to us, not as it is our ability or strength, but his gracious provision. So we give him all the glory. Therefore, take no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. He said, Don't backload, don't go and borrow pressure from tomorrow. Live for now. Live a life that trusts the Father that he who provided for you yesterday is providing for you now. When tomorrow comes, he'll provide focus on his kingdom. Brothers and sisters, we need the sufficiency of grace to communicate the gospel of the kingdom. It takes grace. It's not by ability. I don't know about you. I've told those of you who used to come around, who were with us many years ago, every single thing you are seeing today, International Ministers Fellowship across the world, Global School of Ministry across the world, the Master Class Program, the uh, 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 Rise Me to Prayer Assembly, every single arm of the movement, whether you're talking about Global Missions Board, all of them, not one came because we had a thousand pounds, a thousand dollars to plan with. It was all in obedience. The Lord said, go forth. And we receive that, and we go forth, and we discover that Elohim can make a way where there's no way. There are times we have come to a place where there's no way to go, nothing. But just trusting him, not moving a step ahead of him, and suddenly he will by himself use whoever he wants to make a provision, just like that. So when we talk about it, we talk what we believe, what we have lived out, that grace is possible. Brothers and sisters, we need grace for everything in the family. The family that will prosper is a family of grace. And when they have grace, whether among the spouses, among the children, grace covers people's deficiency. Grace doesn't make a bone of it. Grace doesn't clutch at When I'm counseling young people, I tell them one of the greatest things you can ever do is to have some pillars. One of them, and I speak to Joseph and Kyle, is the pillar of love covers everything. And that is gracious. Is the life of grace where you decide to forgive for what? You decide not to clutch at it. It doesn't matter. A thousand times, a thousand times, you can't do the daunting. Because that's what brought us into the kingdom. If the Father was counting our sins, we would never be in the kingdom. We need grace for each new day. We need grace for each day. We need grace for each week. We need grace for each month. We need grace for each year. We need grace for each situation. 
We need grace to handle certain kinds of situations. You may be situations that you don't know what to do. I've seen people who we love, have cared for, provided every pastoral care possible, and guided, taught the truth, and the enemy comes in, boom, and they suddenly become different from what we thought we knew. And they will go out, and all their passion is one thing, to destroy the commission, to pull it down. And it's so amusing that a human being can take it upon himself to destroy what the Lord is doing by himself. And when I see that, what do I do? Here I am, where I'm sitting now, is one of the places that is my favorite place to just come before the Lord and just intercede for such people. And just ask the Lord for grace not to count anything, not to hold it. And I tell you, brothers and sisters, if you are one of our mentees across the world, one of the secrets of what the Lord has done is never to hold an ought and allow it to consume inside. If you hold and allow it to consume is yourself, you are put in a prison. You forgive and let go. And if you have to take a decision as a leader, what is necessary, whether it is to release somebody who wants to be released, do that expeditiously. It's also grace you extended by saying to somebody, if you cannot stay with us and you are not willing to grow and do what the Lord is asking us to do, praise the Lord, let it be well with you, succeed in whatever you're calling. It takes grace to do that. And brothers and sisters, let us understand that when grace is at work, it manifests as love and mercy and unmerited favor. Let's begin to show everybody, our children, our parents, our spouses, brothers and sisters, unmerited favor. Favor they didn't merit. Let's show them love. Let's show them mercy. No matter what they have done to us, it may pain in the physical, but if you learn to give everything to the Lord, the pain will not there. These are faces of grace. Grace overcomes evil with good. Great is unperturbed by reaction from ungrateful people. Ultimately, the grand plan of Yahweh is to have a global community of grace called the church on this side of eternity. That's what the church is, a global community of grace. And our local assemblies are not to be defined, identified by the size of income, beauty, architecture, or size of the crowd. No. Every local assembly is simply a community of grace where the love of Elohim, the unmerited favor of Elohim, the mercy of Elohim is constantly impressed by the Holy Spirit into the hearts of saints, who in turn express the same to build up one another. We receive it, love, unmerited favor, mercy from Elohim, and we release it to other people, and everybody is doing likewise. The local assembly is held together. Nobody carrying an agenda. I know for those of you who read the text, you hear some of my testimony. Or I tell you, men and brethren, the Father is able to uphold. If you know where I'm coming from, if you know where the Father rescued this, the pit, the valley, the moor, the merry clay from where he picked up this one, if you know where it is, you will know that it is simply grace that I'm preaching the word today. And that's why we show him all. We reflect it all to him. He is awesome. Grace is awesome. This evening and tomorrow morning, come along with us. We're going to speak from the heart what the Lord is saying about grace to close out this awesome cause that I believe when we receive it and walk in it, we're going to be different in our personal walk. We're going to be different in our families, different in our local assemblies, different in household of faith worldwide. We're going to pray and they'll make some announcements. Father in heaven, there's no one like you. Have your way and glorify Yeshua in the midst of your people. Let your name be glorified, Father. Let this word of grace meet hearts that are willing and ready and let them mix it with faith so that grace will explode in the camp of the righteous. Let us be a people of grace, gracious in all things, O Lord. Help us to understand and to walk in it. And Father, I will pray for all of us using myself as a point of contact in the area you need to do extra work of grace. Lord, here we are. Have your way. Do it to the uttermost. Let your name be glorified in Yeshua's mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you so much for being with us on this program and watching. And we believe you learned something and the Lord bless you. Now it's time to connect with us on our social media platforms. We have a daily live stream on Facebook, Monday all the way to Sunday, every day. 
by about 10.30 a.m. UK time. And that's the same at Nigerian time. And you, it's either Apostle George, Monday to Friday, uh, to Thursday, Pastor Grace, uh, Friday to Sunday. And then in the evening of Sunday, we have two sessions from 5.30 to about 6, after 6, another one up to 7. So please join us on the live stream and you're going to enjoy it. We also visit our website www.gsom.ac to download free ebooks. This course you just listened to, all these lessons, you know, there's an ebook we have free of charge. Everything we do is free. But more importantly, you can actually do your program on, you know, ebooks. You can do your program entirely on ebooks and with this video or anyone you want you can also if you want to do the yes course or be, do the master class you can go to www.kingdomboostclub.com and you can subscribe so that you can do it you can also subscribe to our channels this youtube gsom.tv and we also have a telegram channel gsom media you can send us an email at akclife.tv at gmail.com we love you dearly and we want to partner with you to make sure that the body of Yeshua, Jesus, is empowered with truth. Remember, it is the teach, train, equip, activate, and release paradigm. Absolutely free of charge. Have a blessed day and we'll see you again soon.